Why do I care about what this person at the dinner party is going to think or say about me? More importantly, what do I think about myself? What is my truth? Welcome to Spiritually Hungry. Continued summer edition a little bit into September. Today we're going to talk about insecurity. Not really low self-confidence. We're going to dive into a concept of what makes us feel secure or insecure in life. There's some fundamental needs that must be met for our survival, food, shelter, human connection. Think of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. But there's something else that's vital for us to thrive, and that is spirituality. We both recently read an article in the New York Times that got us thinking about the subject. Writer Astra Taylor published an opinion piece titled, Why Does Everyone Feel So Insecure All the Time? I just love the title. It's grabbing. She uncovered so much in the essay, but I kind of want to take a slightly different direction. I mean, she inspired me to really think on this topic. Um, I'm super curious what you took away from that. And the way she started, I thought was interesting. Insecurity is more than just haves and have nots, right? Because often when we think about insecurity, it's rooted in comparing ourselves to other people and how we view ourselves. But I think no matter what you have physically in this world or don't have, I think we all struggle with feeling stressed, overwhelmed, fearful, depressed, and unhappy as a society, especially, I think, more in the United States, personally. Yeah, and I think, again, for me, the most important idea that, which is something I knew before, but I, I, like, I like the title she gave it, but that idea that no matter where a person is in their life, successful, unsuccessful, wealthy, poor, in the middle, most people feel insecure often. And I think delving into both the reason and maybe some of the ways to get out of it is very, very important. And I think for me, when I was thinking about it, I think at the core, if we really unpacked it, again, we assign it to all kinds of things. I feel insecure about this, or I feel insecure about that. In fact, the the author of the essay, she gave an example that she read another piece herself. She said that most of her life, it never occurred to her to fret over the fat in her cheeks. She said, I hardly heard the words buckle fat, much less thought of it as something that I could or should worry about until I saw buckle fat described in The Guardian as a fresh source of insecurity to carry into the new year. She said, maybe you read the same article or maybe you discovered that you were supposed to be insecure about something else, the way you part your hair, the way you fit into your jeans, the make of your car, the size of your home, and the way it's decorated. For those who don't know, Buckle fat is like the fat around the cheeks, like underneath the cheekbones. And some people have more of it than others. Um, but I just thought that was just so interesting, right? Like, so there is that external, you know, society. I mean, that's how people, how companies make a lot of money. They market to our insecurities. Like, if you didn't feel bad about this, you should. And then, you know, and I got curious about buckle fat. So like I researched it. The first thing that came up was how to remove it and before and after pictures. Forget about the definition even, right? So at the real root of it, of course, for some, it's the absence of spirituality and seeing things a different way. But I think it's also because life is terrifyingly unpredictable. We don't know how each day is going to be when we enter it. We really don't. And I think that that uncertainty in life, that that feeling makes us deeply insecure. I, and and I think often we focus sure on the wrong part things. Of it, I think, as I was thinking about this, is that the the real problem here for most people, is what is your North Star? What is, what is leading you in your life? I think what happens, and the ego is very much involved, but certainly now with social media, and, and, and what happens is that we are actually drifting, many people drift in life and are so influenced by others' opinions, by others' thoughts, that they're insecure because even if I, this person's happy with me, or this person's my friend, what about this person and that person? What about these people on Instagram, or or these people at the party, or these people at work? So you're saying we're busy with the wrong, we're focusing on I the think wrong thing. A fu- it's a fundamental, I think it's really, really important. If your internal essence is not what is driving you, you're never going to get to where you're meant to get to in this life. If your North Star is not what I would call your soul or your essence, 
who you are, but rather what your father or brother or friend or Instagram follower thinks about you. You're never going to accomplish what your soul came into this world to accomplish. And I think, therefore, the, the answer to the question, why are we so often insecure so much of the time? It's because we're guided by so many outside forces and people and opinions. The problem with that is not so much that, that you know, okay, I'm insecure, I'm feeling insecure. That's not great. Nobody enjoys feeling insecure. But the real problem, which is, for me, I think, the most important message for our listeners, is that again? Imagine you're driving, trying to drive from you know wherever you're you're from New York to Los Angeles, and you stop the car every every hour, asking the wrong person for directions. Yeah. You you could be driving for a hundred years, you're never going to get there, and that's unfortunately how most of us live our lives. We are so caring and dependent on others' opinions, conscious, subconscious people we know, people we don't know. We are living our lives in circles. Sometimes it is obvious, sometimes it is not. But most important, and this is the scary, sad reality, unless you find the way to make your soul, meaning your true essence, the driver of your life, and your decisions, and what you do, not only will you be secure, insecure so many times, great, that is terrible, right? But the, the worst problem is that you are never going to get to your real destination in life. I think that it kind of reminds me of that, um, you know, the children's game, pin the tail and donkey, like you are blindfolded, right? You are spun around, and you are supposed to pin the tail where you assume the donkey's rear is, right? Yeah. And I think that that is how most people go through life. We are spun around, and then wherever we land, that is where we are, and then we are influenced, especially if we find value in that, in that moment, right? Let us say, whether it is we find a new um, cooking class we like, and we want to be liked there, we want to be known for X, Y, and Z, or a, a good workout class, or even just a group of friends, right? We will follow that. I think that a lot of it is we just don't know who we are, and we don't know what we believe. And I think that unless, which is why I, I write about this a lot, I speak about it a lot, unless you take the time, even if you didn't start your life out like that, even if you skipped that fundamental step, and now you find yourself later in life, you have to go back and really ask yourself, what do I believe? Do I know myself? Do I like who I am? And am I living according to what I really think is true and purposeful? And if I don't know what that is, first of all, and I don't know how that is for me personally, then you can expect to, yeah, feel insecure most of your life and be spun around in circles and really not know which way is up in my book, Rethink Love, I write about your credo, you know, knowing fundamentally what you believe in, not what makes you feel good, but like what at the something you've known, either through trial and error, that you've come to understand as a truth, as a mantra for you. So in my book, I wrote about how at that time, and I still hold this, but I've created many more credos since then, but in change, there's great power. And that's really how I became a change junkie. Now, how did I arrive to that? It was because this life-altering thing happened to me when we had our son, Josh. I absolutely did not know who I wanted to be as a mother. I did not know what I believed about the situation. I mean, it really it struck a chord with me, and I felt very insecure in that moment. And then it dawned on me that, well, you better know what you want to make of the situation, right? And I, I changed my thought process. I changed what I allowed to influence me, specifically about that in that moment. And I realized so wholly and completely that in change, there is great power. And then I started to live that in every area of my life. So it's really going from something that happened to you that was hard and difficult and deriving purpose and meaning from it, and a knowing, a deep sense of knowing, right? But I think that that's what we're supposed to do through all of our experiences in life, and unfortunately, we don't. We look to the person next to us, what should I think about this? Or we look to, and you know, I don't want to blame how we're raised. I think often parents with their best intentions, they they tell their children, you know, I know better, I have life experience, listen to me. But in and essence- Sometimes it's true, right? Yes, but you still, to grow the child, you have to, you have to build that within them so that they will know what they believe. But we make them followers, not leaders of their own lives, not really knowing who they are. And then when we're not the strongest voice in their head, they're going to go to their peers in high school or wherever, in college or, or Instagram. Or, and that will be the influencer. That will be the voice in their head, right? So this 
this insecurity, right? This this is an opportunity. It's really I a calling. Think it's a great blessing. It's an awake. It should be a great awakening. Yeah. So if you find yourself really deeply insecure, even insecurities come up all the time. Stop and say, okay, what is my credo? Create that. You can find it in my book. I give instructions and tutorials. But even like I know somebody I've known her my whole life, and I don't want to out the person, but. <laughs> You know, it kind of narrows it down. Somebody you've known your whole most life. of my life. <laughs> um, but her father was a strong voice in her head. And, and even when she made mistakes, she blamed him. Right. And now he's no longer here. And I hear her with the same voice. And I'm like, why you don't believe, I know you don't believe this because you've lived your life contradicting everything he ever told you. Why are you now still living in that? What do you believe? You know, I always ask people that question because when they don't know, I think it's very telling how to start and where to go from there. Yeah, and there's a verse in Proverbs which, which I think is a good guidepost for this. The verse says, "Your eyes should be looking forward," which means, like we were talking about before, what is your credo? What what is that that you know, believe about yourself and where you need to be going? And I do think, though, it's important to be actively. I'm not sure what the at w- right word for this making ridiculous your thought process right i think it's important to catch yourself you know we we know people say every once in a while you know after looking on instagram they feel down yeah. right i think it's important to to take the time and say how ridiculous is that or you know you 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 go to a party and you're feeling insecure because somebody who whatever is successful, wealthy, important, uh, you know. Looks better to you than you do in your yeah, own eyes. Yeah. I think it's really important to add, add it to yourself, to your friend, in your own mind, to say, how ridiculous is that? How ridiculous is that, that, you know, life is so short, and I'm going to spend time actually worrying about what this person is saying, or thinking, or that person, or even my parents, or what, what, whoever that is. Your eyes should be looking forward, not to your friends, family, whoever it is, and what they're thinking about you. And the only way, and again, this is something that I have actively pursued my entire life, and none of us are perfect at it yet. We all have moments of insecurity, but I I feel very strongly that unless you laugh at yourself actively for allowing yourself to be influenced and made to feel insecure, by all kinds of people, important people, not important people, family, friends, it doesn't matter. But m- laugh, laugh at yourself. Laugh at those moments of, of caring uh, about what certain people are saying or doing or think, possibly thinking about you. Then if you'll find, if you do that often enough and remind yourself, where, what's, my, what's my North Star? What's, what's really guiding my life? Well, it should be my soul, my essence, what I really need to accomplish in life, what I really know is right. And leave by the wayside all the silliness. And literally, I think it's important to laugh at yourself and joke at yourself for all the the thoughts that you have of caring about what other people are thinking or saying. So when you say eyes forward, does that first also apply to not looking only in the future, not looking behind you, not look being also I, I guess it's really just being also right, exactly. being present, living in the moment. Exactly. But uh, yes, yes. But but I was also meaning it that don't look to your right, oh, what is this person saying? For what approval, is this per- validation. Exactly. And exactly. then the other thing is, it's easy to kind of say, yeah, this is ridiculous, this thing on Instagram I saw, or that it's affecting my mood. But I don't. I think until you can get to that place, a really important step is to guard your eyes, guard your energy, your space, where you allow yourself to go and be. Are you in a toxic environment? Because I think often... We try to convince ourselves, but there's also things we need to do to really protect ourselves. Like something I started doing in the last year, and I keep doing it more and more, is to guard my time because I kept finding people were stealing it, but I was allowing it, right? It's that same thing. And then when you guard your time, you're able to fill it with the things that are really important to you and put energy where you really derive purpose and meaning. So I think the same thing is here as well. You know, where are you allowing other people's opinions? movies, their lifestyles that you don't even want, by the way, where are you allowing that to impress upon you in ways that are actually negative? Yeah. And I think, again, I really think it's an epidemic, certainly in our in our yeah. times, where it's more natural for us to be influenced, upset by what others are thinking about us, rather than what we're thinking about us. And I think, again, that's another important question. You know, 
what do you think about yourself? Right? I mean, I, I know so many people who, again, who spend most of their day unhappy because, you know, this person's doing this, or this person is thinking this about me. When the only thing that should matter is, what do you think about yourself? Are you doing the right thing? Are you, are you happy with what you're doing? Then, again, who cares? I and mean, that's the thing, though, right? If people were happy, they wouldn't look outward for it. But even if they're unhappy, the only source of unhappiness should be, because I'm not doing what I think I should yeah, be I doing. Yeah, I need to like... Not because a thousand my percent. friend doesn't right. approve. It's just an indication. It's a hint that you actually need to cultivate how you feel about you, and that's the real work, not about anything outside of you. Absolutely. So a great tool for our listeners, next time you're feeling insecure, use it as a powerful learning to ask yourself the question, why am I feeling insecure? Why do I care about what this person at the dinner party is going to think or say about me? More importantly, what do I think about myself? What is my truth? What is guiding me in my life? Because again, and this is both a scary but hopefully inspiring thought, the more voices I have in my head that are different than my soul's voice, the zero chance that I'll actually accomplish what I came to this world to accomplish. So we hope you are enjoying the rest of your September, and we hope you enjoyed listening to this podcast as much as we enjoyed recording it. Stay spiritually hungry.